This is episode 41 of our Road to Unicum, and this is my in-depth mastery guide to playing light tanks. I spent several months pulling together a lot of really good and bad footage to show you about proper light tank gameplay. Light tanks are notorious for having the highest skill cap in World of Tanks, and it's because they are very fragile and have relatively weak weaponry. It requires a lot of map knowledge and game mechanics and good decision making to leverage the two really big strengths of light tanks and that is their mobility and their vision control. So we're going to start with looking at what bad light tank gameplay looks like and then I can show you what good light tank gameplay looks like after that. First up on the bad, Suicide scouting. This is suicide scouting and this typically happens early in games where a light tank driver will push so far forward that they're going to be isolated and not receive any meaningful help from their allies. Now this light tank, if he were smart, he would have stopped on the opposite side of hill along the B8 area and spot for his teams and enable his snipers to shoot, but since he pushed in so deep, we didn't have to chase him over their hill and there's no way he's going to get any help from anyone on his team except maybe Artie. Now this T-54 lightweight has made a very big mistake. He's come over onto our side of the hill and so he doesn't have a clean exit lane and since I tracked him he eats two more shots from the CDC and he dies a pretty worthless death. You can also suicide scout by pushing into enemy guns when you've been spotted but you don't see who's shooting you. And in the case of this ELC AMX, the ELC has very poor view range and most ELC drivers don't even use optics because binocs are the way to go and so I eat up all 360 of his hit points. In my Leopard I get some really nice early spots of their deployments on the eastern side of the map and then their Leopard decides to engage me to 1v1 or what looks like maybe a 1v1 to him but the reality is since he's on my side of the hill I've got my supporting friendlies who are camping in base who can provide fire support. Now granted, they're not shooting anything, but what this leopard is doing is not playing the odds. You notice I turned on auto-aim since, you know, at this kind of close range with these squishy tanks, penetration is not going to be an issue, and then one of my friendlies there helps burn down that second light tank. It's also possible to suicide scout by pushing too far into an area of the map where it's difficult to exit cleanly so that WZ had pushed into the middle of the map and where I'm shooting him from there's no one who could have shot me except for him. A lot of times light tank drivers will try to rely too much on the mobility and driving to avoid damage like that useless spin over there. I don't know what that guy was doing but I outlanded him four to one and finished him and he was also camping in the back which is our next example of bad gameplay, spawn camping. So if you look at our team, we have an AMX 1390, a very good light tank, and he's sitting all the way back at C9. And because he's doing this, he can't spot for our three tank destroyers who are trying to cover field, and I'm getting spotted in the middle of the map here. So we're at a very big vision deficit because our 1390 is refusing to do his job and selfishly just trying to stay alive. And that game turned out really badly for us, as you can imagine, and he kept dying as well. Uh, this T-71 making the same mistake, spawn camping so far back that he's relying on other people to spot for him. And, you know, if you want to play a light tank that way, you really should just, you know, queue up in a tank destroyer instead and get the right tool for the job. It's also possible to provide worthless spotting, or spotting that just doesn't make any sense. Now, if you look at our team, we have a WZ platoon, and what they've done is stopped on the northwestern corner of city. Now, where they are, they can possibly spot tanks that are, you know, driving across the city. Part of the problem is if they spot anything in city, the opposing tanks are also going to see them because they're going to be so close by that their vision control and their camo are pretty meaningless, right? And because the WZ platoon is doing nothing of any of value, you know, that forced medium tanks, the Type 59s and me, to push up in field and do their job for them. And, you know, we did end up winning this battle because our Type 59s and I ended up carrying us and, you know, flanking in field. But, you know, it's a real big harm to the team if light tanks aren't in spots where they should be. Like, spotting in city, generally speaking, is of extremely low value on almost every map. Um, unless you're talking about mid or late game situations, I'll get to that later. So light tank drivers have a really bad habit of overexposing their tanks. So this 251 is spotted, I pre-aim, and as I continue to fire on him, instead of backing off, he moves up and over the hill. 
So you know, taking a good approach lane is really important. Um, here's another example of overexposure. Check out our HWK12. He's heading toward that WZ that's down in the ditch. And I could see this coming a mile away. And the problem is the WZ is there to bait players into him. So yes, the HWK does kill the WZ, but there are a ton of snipers that are sitting over on D4, D5, and they just obliterate the HWK12. A lot of times late tank drivers will try to spot, but what they'll do is, you know, they'll overexpose themselves. Like this ELC is actually in a pretty decent position to kind of spot our base, but, you know, you've got Splash Bar RD sitting in the open. It's easy to finish off. And then the this other light tank driver, this T37, is making the very big mistake of overexposing himself on the ridge. So he's now taking fire from two directions. The tanks in front of him on top of the hill, as well as the tanks below him that are providing flanking fire. So Chaffee, same mistake, you know, he's trying to shoot somewhere on the northeastern side of the map, but he's giving me very easy shots. And because I'm properly using cover, he's not even able to spot me. And then it, my friend, the T-37, again, you know, very poor driving, driving up on exposed ridge like that, and we burn him down. You can also overexpose your tank if you sit in a forward spotting position too long, especially like this bush here, which is a... Uh, for some players, they like passively scouting there. I don't like it for the very reason you see in this clip here, which is there's no good exit lane. You have to go across open ground to get into the ditch or get over the railroad, and a lot of times you're going to eat damage. Light tank drivers can sometimes get tunnel vision. Like if you look at this 251, he's got his gun pointed to my left or south, and what he hasn't been paying attention to is the fact that his team lost hill already. You know, we killed the T-54 lightweight that was on hill, and I land four shots into the 251. And during my clip reload, the 251 should have exited, but instead, you know, he stays in the same place. And getting caught on that road is a really bad position. And then after I hit him with my first shot, my clip, he tries to back up, but all he's doing is making my job easier for me. And then. It's unfortunate, I almost get the killing shot on this WZ, but he'll show up later in this video. The other way that you can overexpose your tank is if you just killed a tank, you're going to be lit for about another 10 seconds. So this allows me to pre-aim on this T-49 before he even has a chance to spot me, and then you know he chooses a bit of a poor line trying to get away, and I finish him off. This particular battle was really funny because you know they had four light tanks, I killed three of them, and then that T-54 lightweight in the beginning you know, I got him wrecked because, you know, he got on our side of that tower on the hill. It ends up making a really big difference. In this particular battle, I had a big carry uh, because I was able to flank the remaining tanks. All right. The fifth most common mistake is dumb brawling, dumb trading. And if you look at the M41 on our team, he's up by C3, C4. But the problem is he's going up there to brawl so early in the game when most of their tanks are still alive. And at that kind of distance, he's going to get spotted at the same time that he spots them because they're so close by and their VK tier 8 just wrecks them. Just a total waste of a tank. It's okay and I'll show later you can go to city or brawling areas mid to late game but that's after their pack has been thinned out a bit. Here's another example of bad brawling or unwise trading. Now the first thing I did there in terms of spotting that BDR heavy tank that was okay. I did risk taking a shot in return, but I was able to snapshot him and get away. But right here is a really foolish decision. I trade my little 70 alpha damage gun for his gun, which hits more than three times harder than that. And in this particular battle, we end up winning it, but we could have easily lost because I threw away a good chunk of my hit points there and we're facing heavy tanks. Oh, this particular this particular sequence makes me really sad. This battle was really close, and I got greedy and came down thinking I could take down this WZ light tank, but all I did is make the decision for them super easy to push up and dogpile me. And we end up losing this game badly, but had I stayed alive, the score would have been 6-6. Six to six. I could have fallen back to a position on this map, which I'll talk about a little later, right? But I was too aggressive and died. Okay. So enough of bad light tank gameplay. Let's look at some good light tank gameplay, starting with smart active scouting. So if you're going to come up and surf a ridge like I did right there, the thing to do is not to expose your hull at all. You don't want to risk taking any kind of engine damage or worse yet getting tracked. 
Um, and to spot, you barely even have to show even a, a thin slice of your turret. So you don't really want to give them anything to shoot at. And then what I recommend is not going back and spotting on the ridge again until you've dropped from vision control. And generally, the way I tell that is I count off about 10 or 12 seconds, or I wait until the things that I spotted are longer visible to me, because reverse is likely true. And notice, I'm zigzagging pretty heavily in field and driving erratically while staying below the ridge, so that if there already is trying to target me, he's going to have to guess really well. Now one really important thing about you know, active scouting is you're putting yourself at risk to get shots. So you need to pick really careful lines. So there, you know, I'm really careful to only peek above the ridge very briefly. And you'll notice what I'm doing is calling for help and pinging the map when I'm gonna make a run. Okay, so they've dropped from my vision and notice the spotting damage is still rolling in here like at 1800 spotting damage. And so this time around, because I know they know that I'm here. I'm going to choose a shallower pass. So I'm only going to light a couple tanks that are visible. They're the M103 and the T54. And really, um, to some extent, you can choose who dies on the enemy team by which tanks you're spotting. And I wanted us to kill that T54 because he has decent vision control and would be a danger, a threat to spot me. Right? Again, going on another pass, asking for help, you know, making sure my team knows and that they can get ready to aim, pre-aim over here before I even, you know, crest the ridge to light these guys and notice every time I'm spotting two I'm coming back into this depression area on the hill this is how to scout on south hill properly and their tanks at mid don't really have much of a shot um, as long as I'm a little forward a little north of where I am right now once their tanks start to push up to the crest of the hill I can't spot there anymore they're going to be able to shoot me but what I can do is um, back up and there's so much soft cover between us you can see it looks solid that you know heavy tank like that m103 doesn't even spot me despite the fact that i'm unloading my clip on him right, another good example of active scouting so this is in the middle ridge of malinovka now this can be a very dangerous spot to be if there's enemy arty because this this should be a high priority area for arty to knock out people who are peeking but what happens is in this game i got here early and we'll take a look at that later but what we've done is frozen their tanks on hill. We've, we've kind of put them in the awkward position of not quite being all the way up onto hill. And I'm also in a position where I can spot their backline snipers like that E50M. And this is enabling, enabling us to deal the massive amounts of damage. And I'm enabling the tank destroyers and snipers behind me to load up on damage. Like, look at that E75. That's glorious. That dude, he was like full hit points 10 seconds ago. And now he's one-shottable. All right, so let's talk about early spots and damage. You've probably heard... Unicom's mentioned many times that early damage wins games and it really tilts a lot of things in your team's favor and it can also make uh, enemies who have been heavily damaged play very tentatively, which is also good for your team. Um, one thing you can do is to passive scout, you know, and, the, and this is probably the easiest part of playing a light tank. Um, you can look up, there are a lot of guides on YouTube, um, you can Google or look up like four tankers and a dog, he's got a series of uh, I think passive scouting locations it's also on the official forums but the main thing you want to do is go to a position where in general there's going to be some soft cover you can use and then just don't click the left mouse button as tempting as it is like that T67 because I communicated ahead of time already was already pre-aiming there and you can see even here before the countdown goes down I'm telling our tanks and especially our three arties where they can expect for me to spot targets for them. And this way they can pre-aim in that area and it can greatly increase the chances, the probability that our players will be ready to deal damage. Now, this shelf here is a bit exposed and certainly if I get spotted, I'll be vulnerable to Artie. And the real trick to doing this here is staying up long enough and dealing some damage and getting some spots without putting myself at meaningful risk of, of taking return fire. Like in the case of this Hetzer, most tank destroyers don't equip for good reason, they don't run optics, they run binox, which means they have to be stationary to get the view range bonus. So he never sees me that entire time and I you know, take away all of his hit points and then same with that other medium tank behind him. So another example of early spotting and damage on Serene Coast from the north spawn, there's some bushes here by the water and what you can do is spot the approach of their heavies on the eastern peninsula. And what's great about this, this, I love this kind of spotting where you're catching them going laterally. Now these guys are all cutting too far north before they cut over to the east. This is really not a safe line that they're taking. And not only are we dealing damage to their tanks, but we're freezing them in place and you know, essentially doing area denial. Because now they know they've been spotted and if they're going to cross, they're going to eat more, you know, eat more metal from us. So another thing to keep in mind about active scouting is 
figuring out how long you should stay, early spotting is figuring out how long to stay in a spot before you're at risk of getting killed. And generally rule of thumb is as long as they can't yet spot you or they're still easy to damage targets. You can see I got a sweet tracking shot on that tiger followed up with another carefully placed shot and then my team passed, uh, you know, finished them off. Okay, so this is on the north side of Erlenburg and if you remember my, remember my I think it was a T37 video, I showed how to spot early. You basically want to go up on this ridge here along kind of around like E3. And so again, getting shots on their tanks moving horizontally or laterally to us. And their tanks are making the mistake of driving a long road to go west. You really shouldn't do that unless you're in a really fast tank. And even if you can, you should think twice because you know if the opposing team that spawned north has a player like me, we're gonna spot you and get you wrecked immediately. And this E5 is just not having a good day. You know, it's it's really sad. Like he's given away his, you know, the bulk of his hit points for nothing. He's not even aiming his turret at us to, you know, potentially bounce some shots. But the, the thing is, being here where I am, you can get spotted early, and I was spotted for a moment. And I'm also potentially getting flanked by this IS-4, which is heading into the cap. And so I knew he was coming there. I wanted to line up a shot, and then turn around and then run away. So that's really the trick with early spotting and damage. Trying to spot and deal as much damage as you can, and then exit, ideally without taking any damage. Another example of early spotting, this was the same Malinovka match I was showing a little while ago in my Sheridan, and what I was doing was clicking on the map to tell my team where I'm going to go. One thing which is really important is light tanks can help their team deploy properly. Like, one thing I don't do, I don't play the south side of this map in pubs for the simple reason that if I spot anywhere in the south part of the map, it's going to encourage a lot of people on our team to camp down near our spawn and frankly the south side of this map is nowhere near as valuable as the north side it's really easy to counter stuff coming south um, it's much harder if you know the other team has north so we wrecked that 1390 that i spotted we spotted the second 1390 they don't have already on their side so the only tanks that can really hit me are going to be tanks kind of like along the 90 line so i'm being careful notice i'm you know constantly moving back and forth and i'm just gonna hurry up and take a snapshot on that 1390 you know, before I can eat a return shell. And what ends up happening a little later is we freeze their tanks going up on the hill. You know, it's, it's a combination of both area denial as well as just putting them in a really bad situation of getting pinched by fire below them and then from in front of them. So here my T49 is in Prokhorovka, and from the north spawn, you can cheat. There's a little gap right between the hills right here where you can spot some of their tanks right as they cross over the railroad track. I get a sweet tracking shot on that panther, and I'm only showing just the top part of my turret there. And we have a big, there's a big asymmetrical relationship in the amount of cover. I can dictate how much of that panther sees of me, which is very little. His tank is fully exposed, and this is making it very easy for me to farm him of damage. And then their T-71 is suicide scouting. He's way too far forward and he's not in a position really to either defend himself and his friendly tanks, his tanks on his side are not in a position yet where they can really fire on what he's spotting. So that's not very worthwhile spotting. I take a shot on this tortoise. Now granted it's really well armored and I get spotted so I need to get off of here. The tortoise gun was keeping me off of the panther a little earlier so you know you don't want to eat too much damage when you're doing your early spotting. So light tanks have always on camo and anytime you can get soft cover that's 15 meters away or more from you you can do this where it looks like the bush is solid but you can still see the outline of the enemy tank and that means that when you fire you still retain the benefits of that camo so you're constantly seeing me move in lines where I've got bushes to hide me from the tanks in mid I've got bushes to hide me from the tanks directly in front of me to the south on the hill and I know this tank destroyer here this T25 most likely does not have optics and so I go up for a second shot and our team finishes them off. Now the Leo, the Leo spotted me. I think the front half of my tank might have been sitting out from behind a bush and that Leo driver probably has optics so you know I move up just a little bit to get behind one of the little bumps on the hill. And then another example here with the Leopard of you know having that intervening soft camel between us. Now there isn't soft camel between us. He could theoretically spot us. But a lot of tanks like in the lower tiers have really poor view ranges like under 360 meters or less. You want to take low risk, you want to maximize or capitalize on low risk opportunities as much as possible. So something that I 
will often do, you know, on this particular map, from the south spawn is spot there crossing to the east, and what you'll catch is that magical combination of tanks going laterally across from you. They don't have much hard cover to work with. I can dictate how much exposure I have because that hill directly to my left provides great hard cover, and then we wreck that Panzer 4H, which in most cases players will run with the derp gun. Uh, so, you know, you need to be cautious about return fire, but I will know when he's aiming his turret toward me. Moreover, his gun's super inaccurate. So, you know, even in the time it would take him to turn his turret and aim at me before he fires, I could probably squeeze off a shot or two. Now, what's interesting about this, you know, tank destroyer I'm killing is I'm dictating when we can see each other. I'm hiding my hull, whereas most of his hull and the upper part of his tank is fully exposed. You know, going back to the Prokhorovka battle, I can work my good gun depression and the soft cover to get shots, to get first shot opportunities over and over and over again because they don't have anyone who can spot me because, you know, we've already killed several of their tanks. And, you know, these kind of shots here, if you're on the relationship on Prokhorovka, regardless of what you spawn is on, is that middle and the hill are tied together. They can fire on each other and provide support. That's how you play that map. You can push along the one lane, you know, if you've got a passive scout. Um, generally speaking in pubs, I don't like to do it because I like to be able to use my gun as well as spot. And I think that's something too, you gotta be really careful about. Like notice I don't chase damage and you know in that case that was super low risk because several of us recognized that that idiot T-54 lightweight was gonna isolate himself. All right, so I waited pretty far into the video to talk about flanking because a very common mistake with light tank drivers is to try to flank too early. What you want to do is break open a flank. When you can see it starting to weaken, maybe you have a numbers advantage, they're low on hit points, and so I you know, get one shot on a patent as he's trying to run away. I finish off that T-54 mod 1, and you know, now I'm going to see if I can farm just a little bit of damage on this patent. I need to be careful because you know if we trade shots, that's going to favor him but you know, he's still trying to get away because he's on the wrong side of the tracks. And then one thing to recognize is when you can't push on enemy tanks anymore. So you know, they've got a few tanks sitting, you know, spawn camping pretty hard, and so all I'm gonna do is flex a little bit to my right, stay below the railway, cross over, and so there's no way that they can shoot me unless they come peeking pretty far out behind that rock and will expose themselves to my team. And then once I get up here, I should now have flanking shots on that Artie, there he is. So I can pick him off and then the T25, or sorry, the T28 prot just fired, as did the patent. So, you know, one thing you want to try to do is it's generally, of course, it's safer to push up on enemies if you know that they're on reload. And then the T28 prot, despite my bad driving, has such a slow hull and turret traverse that I'm able to get behind him here and land multiple shots and before he can even get his turret around. And now I can go clean up that patent who, he's in a good position all things considered, there really isn't much more he's going to be able to do, but you know, because I've been picking good approach lanes and minimizing my exposure, I can survive a hit from him, whereas he's too shottable for me, and one mistake he made initially was driving towards me. Uh, generally speaking, if there's a light tank trying to circle straight for you, you want to back up and rotate your tank to face him. So, you know, here I'm taking a low risk shot because the 704 is a turretless tank destroyer and he doesn't have a shot, and then I'm going to leave the 704 alone for the moment because he's now looking at me, but this 59 Patton is not looking at me, and I'm able to squeeze off two shots before he even looks at me. That third shot, I might have ended up trading some damage with him, so you got to be careful about that. And then there's some cases, like right here, where it's possible that the RHM Borsig could have shot me, but, you know, I had the hit points to give, and then instead of being greedy and taking a last shot out of my clip on the 704, I go ahead and pull back and reload. So here's another great flanking opportunity. This bat chat, their tier 10 autoloader, is caught between me and a KV-4. Now, granted, I'm too shottable to him, so I gotta be pretty careful about what I'm doing. But he backs into my line of fire, and I know that bat chat has really bad gun handling. You know, I talked about that in you know an earlier Road to Unicum episode. And I time it so that I'm at most gonna take one shot from him. So I am obviously one shot of one. You can tell their bat chat's now coming after me, so the last thing I wanna do is <laughs> Like, hang out here, I want to get the heck away and go pick on somebody else since we have the lead whose attention is occupied somewhere else. So here's, you know, a great example. Just like half a minute of driving and I'm right behind 
their E75, and this gives me a glorious opportunity to farm him for tons of damage. And there really isn't much that he can do. He's got tanks in front of him, tanks below him. You really should never push in deep while there are tanks be behind you or to the side of you, because you'll just get encircled like that. Okay, you may remember the 1390 earlier, I was spotting across the water in Serene Coast, doing some area denial, and it turned out their only heavy tank that crossed over was their Chrysler K, and he was already pretty beat up. So, you know, once I realized that he was isolated, went ahead and drove around here, softened him up with a few more shots, and then our Oho finishes him off. And now the, we've got map control. The east side of the map is ours. I'm going to outvision any other tanks that they have. That ended up being an easy win and, you know, a nice farm fest for me. Okay, now, flanking in city or brawling areas is something you can do mid to late game when they've been thinned out a little bit. I generally don't recommend, I mean, it's generally stupid to go try to brawl early in games, you know, unless you're top tier and they've got a lot of really weak tanks, because you'll be facing tanks with more hit points, you know, better armor, more alpha than you. But in this case, you know, we had a numbers advantage on the western side of the map. We... We're not doing so on the eastern side of the map, and so I help thin out their tanks. Like, here's another good example, you know, of, of flanking. Like, in this case, the Super Pershing to the east of me right here is focused on the IS-6. Now, I do eat a shot from the Super Pershing that's to my right and south of me. I probably could have positioned myself behind a dead tank so that I could shoot on the Super Pershing, but not get shot by the other one. And then as much as possible when you're flanking, you want to be unpredictable. You want to come up behind them. Now, the E5, no doubt, is staring at the mini-map and assuming we're going to be coming from the west, so that's the last thing I'm going to do. I'm going to come around from behind him. And this E5, uh, sorry, this, um, this Patriot is making the very common mistake of trying to cap in a situation where it just ain't going to happen, son. You know, like, there's too many of us. We're too close by since it's a small city map. I get four penetrating shots on him, and while he's trying to look at me... Our friendly tanks finish him off. The flanking is so good in a light tank. We've got the speed for it. Now let's E75 try to cross over. I can't help Hill right now. There's too much going on there. They've got tanks that are really good hull down. But what I can do, what you want to figure out as a light tank driver, is where you can tip the scales and break up on a flank. So they do have three tanks to R2 on the western side, but their tanks are already pretty beaten up. And while the Super Pershing did have a, a pretty good amount of health, I've now dropped them to one shot territory and then polish up the E75, which is a really good kill. And they're stuck in a, a tough situation here. They can either turn around and face me or they can face the heavy tanks in front of them, but they can't do both. I finish off the KV-3 and now we've won west. And despite the fact of not having hill, which is really important in this map, uh, we've, you know, split map control. And moreover, I can now push in and spot and kill their arties. And this is worth saying too, in my opinion, it's not worth going after arty until you want to flank. Right? Unless it's a really small map, because if you go after Artie early, that's pretty often sui scouting, right? Because there are going to be multiple tanks that can turn and defend against you, and you'll be isolated, you won't get any help. Now here I'm watching the mini-map. I spotted a whole cluster of their tanks right in the middle of the map, like around D67, so I ain't peeking there. That's a bad idea, I'm not going to do it, but I noticed we've got a numbers advantage in City, which makes sense, since they're so thickly clustered on the middle of the map, and so I can take a shot on this Chrysler K and he makes the mistake of firing when I'm clearly not there anymore and he can only aim his turret at either me or the I-7 in front of him so that allows me to get in a couple shots and finish him off and now I can go into city again normally you wouldn't come in here to start but judging based on their deployment and our relative deployment I can come up push up get some flanking fire in the 1390 and then what I'm going to help do is accelerate the speed as which we are killing their heavies that are here in city and the reason why is you've got to win an area of the map really quickly like if you look at the middle of the map we look like we might get smashed there their tanks are finally pushing up and right here notice i wait until that is4 continues to make the mistake of turning this hull too far away from me so i can get an easy penetrating shot so sometimes it's worth you know withholding your fire just for a second if it looks like you're going to get a better shot and you know i'm just racking up damage on these heavy tanks we've now won city and pretty soon we're going to encapsulate them all right, so flanking is often, you know, moving forward against enemy tanks, but there are times when it makes sense to back off and retreat. And so, you know, I'm looking at the map. The only close that was cl tank that was close to helping me here was the T-54, and their bulldog already crossed. Now, if I had pushed up and tried to move into the entrance of mines, I would have been facing both the bulldog and the Centurion AX, even if the three of us all drove up on the hill. And if I couldn't 
make it through the mouth of hill, I would have been getting wrecked by their tanks behind it. So what I do is fall back to position. Mines is really odd that the map is so small and hill provides such a good you know, area to work from in terms of being able to fire in lots, lots of areas on the map. But as long as I keep spawning their tanks at hill, I'm limiting their ability to use that vantage point and being very patient and whittling them down. This, in my opinion, is the best way to try to win. Like, you can't really push east if they got hill because they'll shoot down on you. You can't push west because they'll shoot you when you go toward the island. Um, if you sit underneath them, you're not going to do anything. And in this case, we were patient. And now that they've been thinned out, I can go back up to hill. I forced their I-7 to back off because I was spotting him and our guys were shooting at him. And then this scorpion does hit me, but he's in such a hurry to get away from me that he, <laughs> he ends up nosediving and killing himself. And we end up coming back from a game where we had no hill control to start with. You know, in World of Tanks, it's really important to read the game flow. So I'm already predicting that we're going to lose this east side of the map badly. We've got a, I think, a Hetzer and a Matilda facing off against four enemy tanks. And the problem is, is that our tanks that are spawn camping don't have they can't view the tanks that are coming up, right? So what I've done is backed up to this position down here on K0. Now to the novice eye, you might think, oh, that looks a, hot, a heck of a lot like camping. And really it's not. What I'm doing is picking a spot where I've got working hard cover and I'm gonna have non-stop flanking shots on them, which are super easy penetrations. And I'm shooting a tank that's one tier above me and just farming his hit points, right? And the thing is, because he's facing laterally and facing to my left, to the west, he can't really do much about his exposure. He can limit exposure to the tanks to the west and face toward me, but then he's not doing anything. If he tries to run at me, then he's going to be risking exposure to the tanks that we have who've been camping to my left. But here's this other tank now caught out in the open. I'm just farming his hit points. And you know, while this match was looking pretty badly, because I fell back and took a corner where I would get that flanking fire, we were able to come back and win this match. So still pushing forward, same match you know, on there. Luke's and trying to gradually whittle them down. You know, most Luke's drivers are going to be running that excellent auto cannon, which I covered in a previous example, uh, a previous episode of the Road to Unicum. And then, thanks to the Leopard's nice gun handling, I polish off the Luke's. And once we uh, kill this Matilda that I've just spotted, and he's caught dead in the open, we're going to have complete vision control, and map control. Now, notice I'm not getting greeting going up there. I mean, granted, the game should be in hand, but I don't really believe it should chase damage if there's the possibility that by your doing so, you die, and then your team's going to lose a game you really should have won. It's also really important to gauge when you're going to need to run, and then to run before you need to run. If you start running once you start taking damage, you've waited too long, right? So they've got a Kronwagen, a uh, Batch Hat 25, and a T49. We're not going to win this exchange. Those are autoloaders you know, much bigger guns, and R1390 behind me, he waited too long, it's clear I was exiting, there's no reason for him to stay here, right, but I do notice their T49 is over-pursuing a bit, so their Kronwagen is taking a little bit of time to catch up, and their T49 peaks, which you really shouldn't, that was not, mini mi <laughs> like, minimizing his risk on his part, and then we're now able to provide some flanking fire on their tanks that have pushed into our base and are threatening our arty. And so, you know, this game was looking pretty, you know, we were in a pretty bad spot, and if I had stayed where I was, for sure, the Kronwagen would have killed me. But instead, what we've been able to do, pick off the T-49, pick off the 1390, our arty died, um, but despite this pathetically long reload uh, from this, you know, shared in this tier 10 light tank, I've got plenty of time and I've got the vision control to then get the killing shot on the 704. At this point I am spotted by the Kronvog and he takes a shot and it's important to count how many shots he's got in his autoloader. Now I'm going to run away from that guy as long as he's chasing me, but the second he stops to engage R1390 who is hiding in the ditch, very very sneaky of him, Kronvog took one shot at me earlier, missed two shots on the 1390, which means he has at most one more shot in his clip and I can afford to trade with him because he's on a very long reload. You know, it's interesting, I know a lot of people turn the game sounds down. I actually keep the game sounds up pretty loud when I'm playing because I want to hear when people are firing. The sounds of different guns, you know, where, you know, when those shots hit, etc. gives me an idea of who's on reload and who's not. 
All right, now one really counterintuitive thing about light tanks is sometimes you gotta recognize when you're not in a truly bad position. Now I'm gonna go push up to this ridge to try to get some early spots on their tanks along the B and C lines. And what ends up happening is three of their four light tanks are just gonna be on the opposite side of this ridge from me. Now, I told my team where I was gonna be. And I've got a Skoda behind me and a few other tanks. So if they peek up and over the hill, I've got support. So if they decide to push in on me, I'm going to have some, some support, which is really important. And then their 1390, notice when he drives away from the ridge, it makes me makes it a lot easier for me to shoot his tank, and he's exposing his hull. Um, you know, it gives me a very big target, and it's tough for him to fire back and land shots. Now, there, the 1390 pushed up and over the ridge and landed two shots on me, but he ate a lot of return fire, and he's now one-shottable. To pick off the 251, and you know, now we're driving them back. Oh, something which is just so frustrating at times to light tank drivers. You've got to watch your friendly players. Sometimes they'll crowd you, sometimes they'll bump you or cut you off. In this case, these two idiot heavy tanks, which really shouldn't be on island, they're sitting right behind me. And so granted, I may not be spotty, spotted, but those bloated whales are going to get spotted. When they get shot at, I'm the one who's going to take the damage. So I drive away from them. And honestly, there's really nothing you can do sometimes. People just don't get it. You know, and like it would be useless for me to spend the two minutes I would explain to this Chrysler why he's being a complete dumbass. And instead, just back away and find something else to do. You know, and this Chrysler ended up dealing one shot's worth of damage and just getting absolutely wrecked but you can't I mean, you can't fix stupid you know people are going to do that you just can't let them put you in a position where it's going to jeopardize your health here's another example i'm in this hook area which is a great place for light tanks and medium tanks because you can fire on the southern hill you can spot their base campers but this vk is pushed up he pushed the cdc out of the way and now he's standing between me he's standing behind the bushes so i can't push up to the bushes and spot because you know, they're going to see him and then hit me instead. And what's really pathetic about that VK's positioning is he's got crappy vision, so he may not spot much of anything anyway. So, you know, I relocate. It's the only thing I can do and end up, you know, picking off a fellow Tier 7 light tank and then working around hill to flank this T-10. I take a shot from the T-28 prot, but, you know... By the time that heavy tank, the T-10, is down, I'm able to tuck in underneath this hill. And that, that's something which is totally counterintuitive, by the way. You know, pulling sometimes closer to opponents is, in fact, safer than trying to run away from them. Okay, so let's put these lists together, and let's talk about a worst-case scenario. Like, let's say, you know, either you made a mistake, or they get some lucky shots, and you get, you know, a huge chunk of your hit points taken at the beginning of the battle. And that happens right here. Like, there's one already fire off to the left, and then this other, the second already smashes me, and I am now one-shottable. It's a terrible position to be in, and I now have to play as if I have, I'm one-shottable because I am. So I can't take the kind of risk that I might normally take, or, you know, try to take shots where they're not likely to hit me, because if anything touches me, I'm going to be dead. And I know that both their arties were aiming on the eastern side of the map, and in particular, one of them was aiming at me. Um, another thing too is like, you know, I'm a Unicum, so, you know, that shows up as not so good. I show up as a purple on XVM because I have like a, almost a 2700 W and 8. Uh, and, you know, Unicum focus fire is, is a real thing. You know, I've seen, I've been targeted many times, even when there are other targets, even when there are better targets to shoot at. And so what I'm doing here is staying near a building, which provides me some, with some working hard cover, and then, you know, picking off their tanks that are making bad decisions. Like, this is a tier 7 light tank, a really strong tank, especially, you know, since he is top tier here. But he's put himself in the position where I was able to shoot him twice, and we've got some other friendly tanks firing on him. And now... I can go and apply some of those other good tactics that we talked about earlier. I can go push down the zero line to see if I can spot their arties, and it turns out they're in the northwestern corner of the map, and then I spot their STRV camping at a really popular spot, especially with tank destroyers, and then I stopped here because we've got that intervening soft cover, that tree, which is solid, and I we're able to farm him for damage, and this is no risk to me. And so we took a situation, you know, I took a situation where it's obviously looked really bad for me and ended up turning it into a pretty good game. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it helps you raise your gameplay with light tanks and you start you know, putting some marks on your barrels. Um, certainly this is the longest video I've ever put together. And so, you know, I hope you find it helpful. If you do, you enjoyed it, please like, share it with your friends. And I never mind you guys throwing some gold my way so I can try out more premium tanks. Hope you enjoyed it. Take care.